Notre Dame, four, you saw that, four-point favorite against Iowa State. One thing I wanted to point out about this game, I think Iowa State will have the crowd advantage. Travel. What do you think? I, I, I agree with you, and I think that goes into a little bit of the rationale behind my, pick, behind my pick here. I like Iowa State. I think this is the Cyclone Super Bowl. Uh, they had a couple of chances this year. One point loss to Oklahoma. One point loss to Iowa to really get a breakthrough type win. Didn't get it. They had a terrible performance against Kansas State on the road in their final game. Like one of 13 on third down. Now you get an opportunity to beat Notre Dame in, mm -hmm. your, in your bowl game to end the season on a positive note. Uh, I like Iowa State. Campbell's, what, 13-3 and three against the number as a dog? Uh, I think it's a great spot for Iowa State getting those points. I was very high on Iowa State to start the year. I picked them to play in the Big yep. 12 title game. But Iowa so State, I had Baylor, so I'm, we were on the same page. That we yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sort of feeling that. I like Notre Dame in the game. I just think they're superior uh, in, that, in that. I know they lost their offense coordinator, Chip Long, um, but I, I, I'll, lean, I'll lean Notre Dame in that game. So we disagree a little bit. Disagree a little bit there. I, I don't know if there'll be any disagreement here or not. Uh, the Cotton Bowl coming up after yeah. that. Memphis without Mike Norvell off to mm. Florida State. Uh, Penn State maybe felt like they could have been in the Rose Bowl. What do you think here? I like Penn State. I, 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 you mentioned the Norvell factor. I think he means as much to anybody as they as in this bowl season. What I mean, I, I just think he's that good of a head coach. You saw what he did with Memphis, that a, that, a, that a place has been tough to win at in what I think is a decent conference. And he, he proved he did that. Now he's got the Florida State gig. We'll see what he does there. But I, I, I like Penn State here. They kind of got beat down last year by by Kentucky. I, I thought it was not, not embarrassing, but they got it taken to them. So I expect Penn State with a big effort here in, in this bowl matchup. They, they, they did, and it worried me about Penn State just – I thought they would just come out and bounce back from the Ohio State game and just destroy Rutgers. Mm. Didn't happen. What's going to happen in the ball preparation? If they do think maybe we should have been in the Rose Bowl instead of Wisconsin, uh, we've seen coaching changes have an effect and not have an effect. I, I don't know. I, I, this is a stay away game for me. Okay. But if, if I had to play the game, I might be interested in taking Memphis here plus the points. I'm not sure Penn State's all on the same page here. And M Memphis might have a little something to prove. All right. I like Penn State's defense against that Memphis offense also. All right. Let's get back to the semifinals. And let's look at how each team is fared against the spread. Three teams, LSU, Ohio State, and Clemson combined to go 27-9 and one against that the bad. number. That's pretty good. Oklahoma, on the other hand, obviously, you know, everybody talked about those three teams being in their own tier. Oklahoma, four and eight for their sides uh, in, in this season. Uh, we welcome in somebody that's going to make this set a little bit. Look at looking. You guys, a lot, a lot better looking. Welcome in. Yeah. And a lot more graphics. You got your own background, your Cartoons. own set. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, Todd McShay in studio, obviously. <laughs> Thank you again for coming in. Yeah, uh, you'll be on TV calling the Orange Bowl, and then you'll be on the sidelines for the Peach Bowl. Yep. Right? On radio. Yep. Um, let's start there. LSU, Oklahoma. Obviously, the over unders is as high as any bowl game. If people are expecting a ton of points, when you look at the matchup wise, what intrigues you and how do you see this playing out? How do you match up if you're Oklahoma on the perimeter? That, that's the big question to me. I, I just, you know, you're talking about five nine, five ten corners going up against Justin Jefferson, Chase, all those guys, and it, the size that they have, the speed that they have, the athleticism that they have, and then knowing that you've got a quarterback who's who's going to locate it, you know. And I. I have gone back and I've really looked in the last 20 years. I can't remember a quarterback making this big of an improvement from one year to the next as Joe Burrow. And I know part of it is, is Joe Brady coming in and a new system and confidence and, and the weapons developing. But he is so in charge of that offense and is so decisive and is so confident inside the pocket his pocket presence is as good as as you'll ever see in the college level. Well, what about on the flip side? Do you think there's anything that Dave Aranda and that LSU defense could take away from what they did and had a lot of success against Jalen Hurts when he was at Alabama or just completely different style offense? I think the one the one issue that LSU could have is and Aranda's one I mean, he may be the best defensive coordinator in the country if he, you know if not he's in the top three. They don't have elite pass rushers. Mm. They don't have elite guys up front. And I think that, you know, the back seven, especially the secondary, is what's kind of made up for it. And they've gotten better as the season has progressed. But it'll be interesting to see. You give Lincoln Riley some time. Yeah. You give him a quarterback who can create. And, and listen, Jalen Hurts has, he has limitations. 
but you give you give Lincoln that much time to look and find that one or two like, specific things. Yeah. And the numbers game that the quarterback gives you in terms of the mobility, it, it'll be interesting to see. I, listen, I, just like everybody else, I think LSU is far superior. But I'm really fascinated to see what the game plan is from Lincoln. Yeah, um, you're going to be there. Obviously, we mentioned that we're going to be at the Fiesta Bowl for the nightcap. Ohio State Clemson, you've uh, started your mock draft process. <laughs> the pros are all over the field for this game. I, earlier in the show, I talked about how I'm really interested to see how the Ohio State secondary matches up against those men that are the Clemson wide receivers. And has Clemson played anybody of the caliber of Ohio State up front? No, no, not <laughs> even close. Uh, All right, so is, is, that, is that Dabo's concern? You know, we know he's going to play the underdog, right? right? So, you know, in, in, does that play even more so? At, you know, we, everybody says we can't block him. You know how he's going to go about the things. Of course. But when you look at it, what do you see being the concern for Clemson? They're favored now in this game. Yeah, and they should be. Okay. I actually, I think they should be. All right. And Ohio State's been awesome all season long. But having watched, we had the ACC championship game. Yep. And I know it was Virginia, and Virginia was completely outclassed in that game. But just to watch the offense, this is the best offensive line that, that Clemson's had in 20 years of me evaluating wow. and covering, okay. covering Clemson. Huh. They've always been okay mm -hmm. in the offensive line. This group is actually good. And then you throw in, you know, Justin Ross, T. Higgins, <laughs> these receivers. Nice toys to Travis play with. Etienne, who's explosive out of the backfield. And, oh, by the way, the best quarterback in the country when, when everything's right and Trevor Lawrence has, has gotten right. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.